So I've been thinking a little bit about bullying recently. This seems to be an ever-growing hot topic more and more as the decades go on. Um, thinking a lot about when I was bullied as a kid in the 90s. Uh, probably, you know, for all the same reason autistic children are getting bullied these days. Especially since you know, they didn't know exactly how to explain it. And not only that, it never really came to our attention that I had it in a way that was understood back then enough to believe it. Didn't learn that until it, like, last year. But I was bullied pretty ferociously, especially in grade school. After that, I went to school less and less. In middle school, high school, found ways to get out of it. Depression and whatnot. Sympathetic parents. Uh, but then, after I got out of school, kind of starting in my early to mid-20s, little bit disillusioned about life, I started to become a bully. Uh, this was also roughly the time, you know, like late 2000s. This is the time where uh, it was becoming popular to talk about bullying and fight bullying and that sort of stuff. It became a real, a real public issue. And uh, not that it wasn't before then, but I was in this spot where like, um, I fell into that, you know, the bully turns into bully trap. And instead of jumping on that bandwagon of what I like to call anti-bullies, um, I was real cynical about it. Um, mostly for the reasoning that people are talking about these days, like the, uh, you know, the trophy kids, everyone gets a trophy, everyone's included, microaggressions, that sort of stuff, like, uh, that's pretty much same sort of thing, the coddling that I called out back then, uh, but nobody really gave a shit, because I was a bully, I had turned into an adult bully, and I knew it, um, an intellectual adult bully, um, let me be very clear about that, not that it makes a moral difference, um, I probably made people want to kill themselves just as much as, you know, somebody who beats the shit out of people. Um, and that's not something I'm proud of. But somebody who had to come to terms with this, admit it to myself and others, I started to see that the, the anti-bullying campaign has created something almost, almost worse than... Uh, than bullying, almost, almost worst, almost worse. And I kind of think of it like, you know, anti-bully. So you have bullies and you have anti-bullies. So what is that? Let, let's apply that terminology to, you know, you got heroes and anti-heroes. A hero is looking to do things that are heroic. And an anti-hero you know, sometimes does, they mostly care about, you know, doing what they want to do, and they don't care whether or not their enemy is the bad guy or the heroes. They really don't care. They're in it for themselves. They're in it to, you know, get whatever they want out of life, for good or for bad. And what I've realized is the anti-bullying stuff follows very similar logic to anti-hero concept um, and it's it's turned into this almost virtue signaling tirade from people who were bullied and then you know gained some sort of power and we see this we see this abuse of power from you know some people in the tech industry, we see it from some people in the sales and marketing industry, and you've got these anti-bullies that, you know, they're, they're doing it for a good reason. They're doing it for a good cause, but just like, you know, the anti-hero, he can do good 
and he can do wrong. And typically when he does wrong, it's almost like a menace. Like, hey, we're not supposed to kill the bad guy. Like, come on, come on, Deadpool. Like, you know, like didn't do anything wrong enough for us to stop you, but like, we got to be better than that. And it's like, it's kind of like that. It's almost sad. It's like, you know, they're still hurting so much that they didn't, they don't realize that it's just, you know, me going from being overtly bullied to overtly being a bully. It's just like being a bully with more steps. Being an anti-bully is like, <laughs> bullying is such an abstract thing. And yet, It's turned into this, you know, almost vindictive mission to stomp out injustice and pain. And ironically, it's causing a lot of pain from anyone who thinks different than people who have been bullied. From the individual that has been bullied, anyone who thinks different than them or anyone who thinks like the people who bullied them because bullying is just one part of a personality. So all it has to do is be an emotional trigger or reminder. Even if that person isn't a bully, if they share a personality trait with someone that bullied them, or if they, you know, if they share, you know, anything that reminds them of that, it turns into this vindictive mission. And I see this a lot with the way people put sympathy on a pedestal and Sympathy is not empathetic. Like, you can't have sympathy and empathy at the same time. It's either or. Listening is that transition. People who want sympathy, they only want to listen to other people who have sympathy. Empathetic people can have no sympathy and still be empathetic. And if people are willing and open to listen to empathy and willing and open to listen to a hard truth, then you can give them, you know, sympathy to wean them off of that sympathy addiction. But that's pretty much what it is. This, you know, this anti-bullying campaign, it's turned into, fuck, it's, it's turned into a sympathy addiction fest. And ironically, I even fell into it when I overcame my, you know, justifications of being an adult bully. You know, I wasn't really hurting anyone if I was just using words, that sort of bullshit. And I fell into it. And it's, you know, it's anywhere from social justice warriors to virtue signalers. Virtue signalers are the ones who are like, you know, it's it's a little bit more objective. It's not as subjective and relative as the social justice warriors, they're objective. It's about right and wrong. But at the end of the day, it's still just bullying with more steps because you're still just stomping people out who think differently because they reminded you of, you know, a bully who didn't have sympathy for you for whatever reason because you were, you were different than them. And now it's, uh, it's a form of, of mental class bullying perspective bullying, if you will. It's, it's literally just bullying with more steps. It's <laughs> bullying with good intentions, but still, you know, not good outcomes like the anti-hero. It's, uh, it's anti-bullying. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, morally gray at best. And they get it right about just about as often as they get it wrong. And it really just depends on their moods and the people they surround themselves. It's, you know, it's, it's like gambling with, with, uh, values. You you don't want to do it. You got to clearly define them and, uh, you got to be willing to contradict your feelings to do what's right or else, uh, or else you're just the dead pool of bullying. That's it. You know, if we want to end this cycle of bullying, we got to understand that we overcompensated. And, uh, fucking sucks to say it as somebody who's been bullied and then turned into a bully and then, you know, jumped on the anti-bully bandwagon as I was getting out of being a bully. And I'm just like seeing it from all sides. I'm like... We got to have something better. 
You know, anti-bullying campaigns, they don't work. Anti-anything campaigns don't work, period. That's why people argue endlessly about anti-guns, anti-war, anti- whatever like they know like anti-sugar like nobody cares about anti anti might as well mean you know don't actually care about a solution that's what an anti-campaign means it doesn't raise positive awareness it raises negative awareness anti like like it's right there in front of our faces like it doesn't matter the intentions if we're blind to the outcomes that it's producing, like if we're not willing to look at the data, then we're just basing it off of ego and our gut and what feels good and not what actually works. So let's take another look. Let's look at the data. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the facts. Let's set our feelings aside and look for a reasonable, rational, logical solution to something that plagues both children and adults alike.